Hello and welcome to the lesson on working with vectors. For lesson two, we are going to look at working with vectors. So this is an extension of the 3U course. And for the students that are in the calculus and vectors, you're going to see this as well in the vectors course. Your goal today, I want you to be able to add and subtract vectors using geometric and algebraic methods. So I'm going to actually review both. I taught both in the 3U course. And I'm going to go through and review both for the 4U. So a couple of things, review of trigonometry. Uh, a couple of things you need to be able to know or I expect you to know. First of all, Pythagorean theorem, very important for us. So that's sides A, B, and C, where A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So I'm going to put a note here, okay, only for right triangles. Only for right triangles. If it doesn't have a right angle, do not use this. Okay. Um, so our basic primary trig ratios, so if I was to label this triangle with corners A, B, and C as such, with SOHCAHTOA, you pick what we call the reference angle, so that's the angle I'm going to label the entire triangle with. The side opposite is over there, it's O, across from the 90 is always as a hypotenuse, and the last side is A. For adjacent, unless you take English or pay attention in English, you don't know what adjacent means anyway, so that's why I always label it last. So Katoa. So we know that so gives us sine theta is opposite over the hypotenuse. The ka is cos theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And the toa tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. And finally, for two non-right triangles, you do need to know your sine and cosine law. So, just a quick review of that. Side A, B, and C means that's capital C, capital A, capital B. So we have our sine law. And for sine law, you can have sine A over A equals sine B over B equals sine C over C. Or, depending on how you were taught or what's more comfortable for you, you can flip that and have the sine or the length of sides on the side and the angles in the bottom. doesn't matter. And you can flip back and forth for those that can tell which is the... Uh, best form for them. And finally your cosine law. Do you need to know your cosine law? And that is your c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos of angle c. And quite often I just write it as, and I'll put the or in here, I know I'm going to be looking for side c here, so I just put this whole side over the square root. a squared plus b squared minus 2ab OC. All right, and I know a couple of you, if you, uh, in the grade 10 course in math here, I know often given the angle as well. So if you are looking for angle C, it's equal to the cos inverse of A squared plus B squared minus C squared over 2AB. Okay. So there is your review of trigonometry. And if you've taken the 3U course, you've seen all of this fairly recently then. And a lot of this is coming from grade 10 math anyway. Okay, so operations with vectors. Vectors are very, very, very important for the grade 12 course if you want it to be done right. So vectors are measurable quantities that can be numerically represented. So we can represent them with numbers. And they must include a direction. So the partner to a scalar Remember that the vector and a scalar has measurable quantities. It's the direction that sets the vector apart. Two ways to represent vectors, and they're geometrically and algebraically. Okay, so um, vector notation. So vectors can be uh, represented in several ways. The most common is the name of the vector. So the U vector with the harpoon on top v vector, w vector, and so on. So it's that harpoon on top that makes it the vector notation. So that's our vector notation. 
Now if you come across an older book, um, you can also see it in this form. It's in bold face. In the old days it was tough, tough to put the little extras in like the harpoon. So if you do see in an older textbook, the bold face, that also represents vectors. So I'm just going to put bold face. Not so common now uh, with computer technology, more the old, really old textbooks. And then you can also represent it as tail to head. All right. And this is what I call exactly that tail to head notation. So if you're writing it out, if you're referring to a vector there, your three options, obviously one and three are the more common or practical. Uh, so I'm just looking at vector notation. So vector notation for magnitude, if I am looking for magnitude of u, so magnitude of u, that is the vertical bars. Okay, so vertical bars, vertical bars, mean magnitude, which means that you're not dealing with direction. All right, so no direction. Okay, um, something that is new, if you haven't taken the vectors course, uh, I'm just going to talk about the unit vector very briefly. Uh, we don't really use it a whole lot, um, except for the algebraic format, and I'll talk about that. Unit vector, the notation, is you get rid of the harpoon vector notation, and you go to a hat, all right? So that means unit vector. So that means a magnitude of 1. So a unit vector has a magnitude of 1. And in the direction of u. All right. So it's in the direction of the u vector, but the little caret hat indicates that it's really a unit vector. So it's just pointing in that direction. It has a magnitude of 1. Now for us, we use this with i, j, and k when we do our algebraic form. i hat means it's pointing down the x-axis. So the vector is a length of 1, and we're going to magnify it. And I'll show you that when we get to the review of the algebraic. But that's where that ve unit vector comes in. In the vectors course, we talk about it in far more detail. So let's talk about geometric vectors. Geometric vector is a graphical representation of a vector, and it consists of the following. So again, if you take in the 3U or the 4U math, geometric vector is just a picture. We have what we call our tail, we have our head, and our length represents our magnitude. All right, and then the orientation gives us our direction. All right, so we're actually drawing it in the direction that the vector is facing. So put direction up here. And now the resultant vector r, and that r needs a vector notation on top. A vector, a uh, resultant vector is a vector that is the sum or difference, depending on adding or subtracting, the sum or difference of two or more vectors. So if we add or subtract a series of vectors together, what we have then is our resultant. And it always starts at the tail of the first vector. And then it ends at the head of the last vector. And that's how you draw it. So the resultant is basically where you started from, and it points to where you want to go. So there we go. So let's talk about the triangle law of vector addition or subtraction. So I'm going to sketch myself two vectors here. And you can do this yourself. doesn't matter the orientation of the two vectors. So there we go. And I'm just going to stick with the U and V. 
All right. So the U and V vector. So steps over here. First step is draw the vectors. Head to tail. Okay, so let's assume we're doing the question u plus v. All right, that's what the question's asking. That's what we'll assume. So what we do then is we take the u vector, and I'll clone that. So I'll do it right here. So there's my u vector. And now I take my v vector. Now I'll clone that. And we put it head to tail. All right, so it's in the order being specified u plus v. So I put the tail of the v at the head of the u. Second, uh, draw resultant. Draw the resultant vector. So a resultant vector, I'm going to draw it in red to emphasize. So it starts at where I started and it ends where we finished. That's my resultant vector. Step three, use geometry to find angle where U and V meet. So you will know some information here. So for example, uh, with that U vector, you may have known it was at some angle theta. So when it transferred over here, you know that angle's theta. So remember from for us grade nine, you get two parallel lines, you get a Z pattern. You'll be able to find theta. Similarly, this red, the V vector, I would have had to have given you an angular direction. So if I continue that horizontal, I know the V vector has that angle. Shouldn't be using theta though. Let's go to another Greek letter. Let's use phi. So then you know that that angle inside the triangle is 180 minus theta minus phi. So you have to use geometry to find that missing angle inside the triangle. Step four, use cosine law to determine the magnitude of your resultant, which we can simply replace all that with magnitude r. And the fifth, we then use our sine law to determine our direction. Jam it in there. So use the sine law to determine the direction. So the one thing I do want you to make a note of, um, and I guess I have room underneath here. I'll just make the room. These steps only work for adding two vectors. Or add slash subtract two vectors. Okay. For each additional vector, repeat the process. So we talked about in grade 11 why the algebraic method is more efficient when you had um, two or three or more vectors. Um, two vectors, some people are quicker with the geometric, so you can go ahead and use it for each additional vector. All right, no vector, repeat the steps. There we go. So I'm going to stop it there, and we'll continue in the next video, and we'll do an example using the geometric method.